Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Terra Genesis. For those of you joining me for the first time ever, my name is Abouts, and for those of you returning to my channel, I'd like to welcome you back. Now, Terra Genesis is a pretty unique game. It's a mobile game, and I was actually turned on by it uh, from someone on the Discord who brought it to my attention and said I needed to check it out. Now, I don't play a whole lot of mobile games, but I do enjoy them from time to time, especially when I'm waiting in certain areas that I don't have. Uh, I've got my phone on me, and I... You know, want to burn some time, and mobile games do a really good job at doing that. And just like most mobile games, this does have, you know, those long times when you're kind of, you know, you get things queued up and you're waiting for things to pass, and that's perfectly fine because uh, the way I'll play out this series is that I just will cut out uh, most of that stuff between episodes, so you guys only get to see the good stuff. A terragenesis is all about terraforming planets. You essentially start up a colony. You've got to, you know, survive with your colony, and you want to terraform the planet and make it more habitable for the human population. And it's not easy to do. There's actually a lot of science behind it. The developers have put a lot of science behind it, and they've really made it not only a pretty cool, difficult experience, but they've made it somewhat of a learning experience as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll tap to start here, and we're going to play a game. Now, for this particular one, there is a lot of planets and different scenarios and things you can uh, you can jump into, different levels of difficulty and everything like that. We're just going to do terrestrial planets, and we're going to start off with good old Mars. And Mars is the easiest planet, uh, but it's great to start out with, and it allows you to unlock future planets as you complete uh, various ones. So, I don't have any of the other planets unlocked right now, so we're going to do Mars, and we're going to try to unlock Venus. And then maybe we'll go ahead and do Venus later on in another series and see how we can do there. Let's go ahead and click on Mars here and we've got our select faction screen. Now, there's four different factions to the game. You've got the Daughters of Gaia, which is basically like, almost think of like Alpha Centauri. They're essentially all about trying to uh, transform the planet and make it uh, habitable, but they're uh, keeping the uh, ecology and uh, keeping the planet, um, or take, as it says right here, transform it into an alien world to a new garden of paradise. So I guess not as much like Alpha Centauri, because in Alpha Centauri, the um, Gaia's stepdaughters, they wanted to, uh, they wanted to actually keep Alpha Centauri, essentially, its ecology the same. These people actually want to transform it into a paradise. Uh, so I was actually wrong about that, but uh, enough of that. We'll go and jump and take a look at the next one, the Sons of... Um, oh. Not even going to uh, attempt that. But they're essentially all about... Oh, so these guys would actually be more like the uh, Gaia stepdaughters in Alpha Centauri because they're uh, conservation, so they essentially don't want to change the plant. They want to keep it the same. Then we've got the United Nations Space Administration. They're all about, they see their government types of democracy, they value knowledge, and they're basically about uh, researching and terraforming the planet. And then we've got the Horizon Corporation. They're all about money. They're essentially a space corporation, and they're just about gathering wealth here, government's uh, plutocracy, and uh, you get a reduced cost for orbiter, the orbital surveyor. So I'm actually going to choose the the Horizon Corporation. I've had a lot of luck with them playing on my mobile device. And I find that the bonuses to wealth are pretty nice, especially early on. Now we've got some difficulties here, of course. We are going to turn the tutorial off because I have played this before. Confirm. Faster gameplay, simplifies features, strategic gameplay, complete features, intense gameplay, unique challenges. So I do want to do the expert difficulty because I wanted to try it. I think it's going to be, you know, very difficult, but uh, I think it's going to be very fun. I've done biomass a lot. It's recommended for new and casual players. I've never done biospheres before, but I definitely want to try it. I've heard it's pretty cool, and I've seen some guides online that kind of break it down, and it's really, really unique and different. I think it adds a whole other level to the game, and we'll see what it's all about when we get in the game. But I feel like playing with biospheres is kind of important because it, it adds this tactical, like this whole tactical kind of thing to the game that you miss out on if you just play with biomass. So here we go. 
and we're here at our planet so just like most mobile games here we actually have two types of currency we've got credits which you can just accumulate by doing things like building mines or having uh, certain colonies uh, complete like wonders and stuff like that or find uh, rare metals over here we've got something called Genesis points this is essentially the uh, pay-to-play version of it uh, you don't have to use real-life currency to advance in the game you there's no uh paywalls or anything like that obviously if you're patient and you don't mind researching and waiting for things then uh the the paying for genesis points doesn't really matter to you but you can do these income and transmissions you can click on them and see what they are and you'll get free genesis points if you do things like watch videos and stuff like that but we'll decline this for now because i'm not going to do that on camera but when I'm off camera in between episodes, I'll probably watch a few advertisements just to get some Genesis points. Um, obviously, that's how the developers make their money. So, um, you know, I know there's a lot of mixed opinions on that, but you know, they got to make a living and they've got to eat. So you can see right now that it's Mars 2035. Habitability is currently barren. Our population is zero because we have not started a colony yet. Our priority is going to be to increase the pressure and we've got a couple other buttons here. We've got research colonies, culture, satellites, and biosphere. And then we've got a screen here for graphs. This will basically show you a summary of everything on your planet. You can see we've got, um, if we cycle through them, the temperature, the pressure, the oxygen, water content, the biomass, which we've got biospheres enabled. So we're actually going to be skipping that particular one. And we'll be working at the biosphere section on the main screen. Population and our money. And I'll get more into depth on all of these later on once it means a little bit more to us. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, we've got the 5,000 credits. Is we're going to start a colony. So we'll click on colonies here. And we've got found new colony and found new outpost. Now a colony, you recruit colonists, build your society. Outpost, that's where you scan resources and gain credits. So outpost is where you're going to build your mines and that's where you're going to get your credits from. Colonies is where your people are going to live. So we're going to found a new colony. Uh, adding a new colony costs zero credits. Your first colony is always free. Would you like to begin construction now? Confirm. And it'll give us uh, a map of the terrain of Mars. You can see here that we can select our location. We've got the satellite and the elevation. Now, you could click and place your colony on the satellite screen, and that's fine. But I do like to do it from the elevation screen. And the reason for that being is that when you're terraforming your planet, uh, you'll have things like the polar ice caps melting. And that'll cause the water levels to raise, the sea level in particular. That's going to raise up. And where you see the dark locations on the map, those are locations that are going to be more apt to fill with seawater very quickly. And it's very possible to uh, be terraforming your planet and leave uh, certain buildings or certain structures running that raise the sea level. And the game does run in the background when you're not playing on your mobile device or computer. So if the game is running and you leave, say, a particular building that's raising your sea level running and you forget to turn it off before you log off, you may come back to a complete water planet and all your colonies are now uh, underwater and everybody has drowned. So you want to make sure that you do keep that in mind and when you place your first colony that you place it in an area that's got a high elevation. Any of these brighter areas here, they're going to be more higher elevation. So I'm probably and generally I usually put my area or my colonies, my outposts over on these hills here because I feel like if I do get in a uh, pinch where the sea levels do start raising out of control, I have a little bit more time than say if I placed my colony like on these more lighter gray areas. So we can click here, it will give us a sea level. You can see this is 14 kilometers above the sea level. If I was to cancel that and click over here, you can see it's four kilometers. Over here, it's only three. So yeah, right there's 10, so that's not too bad. But yeah, let's go ahead. 15 is not too bad. Let's go right here, 15 kilometers above sea level. Under hill, but we'll actually call this something else. Uh, let's go ahead and name it. What's a good name for our first colony? We'll call it Hope. I think that'll be good. We'll go ahead and build our first colony. All right, so we've got a population of 100 currently. We can go ahead and click on the colony. So we've got Hope here at a pop of 100. We actually click on it and examine Hope. And you can see that right now Hope doesn't have a local culture, which is fine. We'll get more into details of what that is as culture becomes more of a thing in the game for us. We have a Hab unit that can hold a population of 100 and then 
hope has a population of 100. So one of the first things we're going to want to do is we're going to actually want to upgrade this HAB unit so it can hold a few more people. We can upgrade it for 125 credits. That'll give us uh, plus 50 more population. If we click on here, we can see that we can build a few things. We can start out with a heating cluster that'll start increasing the temperature of the planet by four. Uh, and it's plus four heat, but let me get into actually, we're going to build a heating cluster, but let me get into what that actually, how that actually looks. So coming back into the summary screen here, now we're actually going to take a look at this. And so you can see that uh, looking here, uh, this is this is actually our temperature screen, and it's it's measured by millikelvins, which is just a, a better form of measuring, you know, kind of the the temperature of the planet, what you're trying to get it to, versus using anything else. So you can see that the goal is actually to get the planet's temperature up to 287 thousand. Uh, millikelvins and right now it's currently at 218,000 so once we built that heat cluster that's going to give us a growth of plus four a minute uh, millikelvins which is good we'll start slowly working towards the 287,000 but uh, one of our priorities right now is actually increasing the mining revenue so let's go ahead and go back to colonies and get our first outpost it's going to cost us a million to do it we will confirm and just like the elevation for the colony, you're going to want to put your outpost in a high enough elevation that you won't lose it. So that way, if sea levels go up, you don't lose all of your income because your colonies can go bankrupt and uh, people can uh, die and starve and stuff and you'll lose the game, which I've had happen before. So uh, there's no real particular good answer to where to place your first outpost. I always just try to go for an area that's, you know, pretty good above sea level and uh, just drop it there. So 10 kilometers is pretty good. Um, and for the outpost names, I'll just keep them uh, whatever they are. I won't go nuts with trying to change those. So we did build our first outpost, but you can see that it's still not making us money. And that is because you've actually got to build the mines. So you can see that's actually producing zero credits per minute. But if we click on that and click examine smooth car scar, you can see that we can we have the option to build a new mine so we're actually gonna build a new mine here and how this works uh, this screen here it looks kind of confusing at first but it's very simple you take this cursor here you drag it around and you kind of watch this we're currently scanning for carbon but eventually we can get different resource types that are worth more money and as that thing kind of goes up you're trying to look for an area that seems like it's got a lot of carbon and then we're gonna kind of focus in on that area so right around here seems pretty good. We'll drop the focus down. And as we kind of focus and zoom in, you can see that, that that's actually going up. Now let's see if we can get it. We want to try to get that bar as high as we can because that means there's going to be more carbon and essentially more money. And it looks like that's about the highest spot right there. So we'll go ahead and establish our mine. It'll cost us 50,000 credits and there we go. And that mine is going to produce 245 kilograms a minute of carbon and it's going to net us a profit of plus 490 credits we can actually click on this mine and you'll see that these mines do not last forever they do eventually deplete the resources that are underneath them and will have to be demolished and rebuilt in other locations to mine this one in particular has a depletion time of two days seven hours and 32 minutes we're gonna go ahead and set up another mine though and this whole first outpost here, everybody plays the game a little bit differently. This is how I like to do it. And this whole first outpost here, I'm going to focus on just getting uh, some carbon mines. And then I'll probably research some of the other stuff and try and get something better. Now, some people generally like to go around with a big focus and try to find the good spots. I usually just lower it all the way down and then just go like this until eventually. Because you can see that it kind of goes up and down. And then once you see it kind of hit a big spike, like, oh, you know, I saw that right there. Then you can kind of play around with it, fine tune it. And that's about as good as it's going to get. So 100,000 credits, but we'll put that down. That's giving us plus 985 credits per month. We're going to build a third mine here, I think. See if we can find a really good spot. Obviously, that's perfect. You can't build, uh, like, I can't build it right here. It's, it's too close. You've got to kind of come out. far enough that's going to work there's actually not a whole lot more carbon here so not a whole lot of reason to waste our time scanning for more carbon mines so here's what we're actually going to do now we're going to go back to the research screen we've got 3.4 uh, 
a million credits still, so we're pretty good. And if we go all the way through here, here's the different types of research. Oops, cancel, I don't wanna research that. Um, so here's a different type of research. You got temperature, pressure, oxygen, water, biomass, population and mining resources. We're gonna go ahead and, and pick up research iron right now. These ones are instant, everything else takes time. But if you're going for the mining resources, they're, they're uh, instant in picking up. So yeah, I wanna pick that up. Cancel that. Sometimes my middle mouse button, and it's just kinda of glitchy with the, uh, playing it on the computer because I'm using a program here, but it's, it's kinda of dodgy because it wants to, uh, click on things for whatever reason but yeah okay we'll go to the colony smooth scar we're gonna examine it now we're gonna look for iron so we just go right to build new mine click on this and click on iron and let's see if we can find a good it's a little less common than carbon so we may not find anything crazy let's definitely bring the focus down I'm hoping because iron actually brings in a decent amount of income when you find it right there is actually pretty good Ah, it's too close though, so we'll have to move it over. Right there's still good. Ah, it's still too close. Okay, so we lost a lot there, but we'll still set it up anyways, because you'll see here now it's 646 credits, which is a lot better. And now if you can get it um, all the way, way up here, you can actually bring in a, a large amount of money with iron. But as you can see, this outpost actually does not have a lot of iron deposits around it. And they're pretty close to the the ones that are good are too close to carbon to really be worth it. Which I guess is okay. We can see if we can get one more right here. Then we'll take a look at our money. I don't know if I want to spend that much money on one there. So we're actually not going to put one more down. I'd probably be better off building another outpost, believe it or not. Okay, so now the priority has gone back to increase pressure. So instead of building another outpost, though, let's take a look real quick and make sure we at least have a positive amount of money coming in. And we do. Uh, positive 1,131 credits a minute. So we'll let that tick on for a little bit. And we're going to go to research and we're gonna pick something to research. So now it said the priority was to increase the pressure and that's what we're gonna to wanna to focus on. So going all the way down here, we have thermal dust, we can click on it. By darkening the color of an object, the more light it will absorb and turn into heat. By coating sheets of glaciers of frozen CO2 and specially designed black powder, we can help warm them and begin releasing the carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And it's gonna give us plus four pressure. It's gonna take an hour and 18 minutes to research and cost us 1 million credits. So we'll click on that and get that started. Now you can see that we can actually hurry it if we want and use Genesis points to do that, but there's really not a whole lot of reason to do that because we don't have enough credits anyways. We could get credits with Genesis points, which is always great. Uh, but we won't worry about that either because uh, there's not a whole lot of point in doing that since we've got that research going anyways and we don't wanna blow our Genesis points right now because they're gonna come in handy later. Um, so one other thing here, we've got the culture. Now you can see that we've got plus one culture point and culture essentially is what kind of, uh, gives your, your, uh, people, uh, different, I don't want to say upgrades, but the essentially, uh, gives them bonuses. So as you spend culture points in certain categories, uh, you'll get bonuses towards things like financial growth. You can see down here, research speed, biomass growth. So you can see we actually have plus 30% financial growth, but whichever way you go with it, you lose in the opposite direction. So we have plus 30% financial growth, but minus 30% research speed. And over here we have plus 15% financial growth, but minus 15% population growth. If I clicked on government and I went for plus 5% democracy, my I get a bo bonus to the population growth, but then I would lose 5% in the financial growth. So it's it's kind of a back and forth tug of war between where you see yourself going or how you want to play the game. Uh, generally, 
uh, for the first culture point, I like to put it up here in victory. And the reason for that is because you have to eventually get enough victory or enough colony points, or I'm sorry, culture points into here and work towards independence. Every culture point gives you five, plus 5% 5 independence and at 100% you win the game essentially. But um, obviously you could just keep dumping culture points into victory, but it takes some time because culture points do not come easy. They only come per population and you'll have to build up your colony and terraform your planet to hold larger populations. So uh, that's kind of how they play off the victory of the game. And we're going to try to do that. So do I want to put the, do I want to put this in victory though? Or is there something I want to work on? I think the nice thing about that, I, or at least that I enjoy, uh, particularly about the uh, corporation here is that they don't start anything in economy and eco policy. You can see that those are both 0%. So um, the financial growth is always great, but you do take the research speed hit, which is kind of rough. Population growth isn't as important because that can be offset with certain researches, but the research speed really does hurt. But looking at economy and eco policy, you can really kind of go however you want to go if you want to do that. Oh, we actually got a random pop up here. So during an intense dust storm, over a dozen travelers reported seeing a huge stone face carved into the mountains near Hope. When the dust settled, it could not be relocated, but the witnesses insist that something is out there. Ooh, that's kind of neat. I haven't seen that one before. All right, that might be part of the difficulty too. But okay, so do I want to dump it? Do I want to go for maybe like construction speed or biomass growth? Nah, I think I'm just going to go for the victory like I usually do. Better not... Uh, uh, it gets harder and harder to get towards independent as you need more and more population. So actually trying to dump those into victory is pretty is a pretty good strategy. And you can actually click this here and zoom out and see your whole planet. You can actually grab your planet clicking on this. Or I'm sorry, you can see the map clicking on that. But you can grab your planet, planet clicking, clicking on this here and you can rotate it around and see how it's doing. And uh, what's really cool about this is that over time, as you get, uh, you increase the pressure, temperature, water levels, you're going to see all that happen until eventually Mars looks like Earth. And it takes a lot of time for it to happen, but it's really cool because it's a very slow progression. And, you know, you'll just log on one day and be like, oh, holy crap, you know, I can see a little bit of water. You'll eventually be able to see your colonies too, but I don't think ours is large enough to see from space yet. It might be. Let me see if I can spot it. It'll look like a little ball of light. Should be able to see it. I see that there, but I don't think that's it. Oh, there it is right there. That might be our outpost too. Because you can see there's one there and there's one right there. And those will get larger as the colonies grow larger as well. But, all right. So I think that's it for this episode. We've pretty much covered just about everything. There's a few other things we got to go over, but we'll save that for uh, the future episodes. We'll wait for our money to tick up. Wait for this research to be done. And then we'll... Uh, We'll end up probably growing our colony, I'd say. But with that being said, I want to thank you all for joining me. I do hope that you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you next time.